Okay, let's talk about the quadratic formula, and that's what we're looking at right here. And you can see I'm saying that 99% of you will make an error when you're learning to master this formula. Now, some of you out there might be saying, well, not me. I uh, learned this perfectly. It's easy. Well, I'm going to give you a problem here in a second, and we can kind of test to see if you will make an error. But I can tell you right now, the majority of you uh, likely will make a little misstep uh, with this particular problem. But I'm going to really highlight some places where students make mistakes using a quadratic formula. This is, a, a course, extremely important to know. If you're in any sort of algebra course, Algebra 1 or higher, you need to master this formula. But uh, over the years, I'm going to show you like real specific spots uh, when students use this formula where uh, they often make mistakes. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. And we're going to get into this nice challenge here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, everyone can be reasonably successful in mathematics. So if you're failing, struggling, it doesn't have to be that way, okay? So, you know, of course, everyone can have a tough time with any subject, but uh, to be successful in math, you need to work hard, okay? There are no shortcuts. So if you're not working that hard, you need to work harder <laughs> than you currently are, i.e. take notes, do all the homework, etc. ask questions to your teacher. The second thing you need is great math instruction, super clear, understandable, and comprehensive. That's where it can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. It will really help you out big time. Also, if you're preparing for any test with a math section, uh, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, I have a ton of test prep courses. If you homeschool, I have excellent middle and high school math courses for homeschoolers. homeschoolers. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel as that helps me out. So. I'm just curious, how many of you think you know how to fully use the quadratic formula? Okay, I would suspect a lot of you are saying, yeah, yeah, I could do this. Go ahead and tell me, you know, show me your uh, practice problem. Well, I'm going to even do uh, one better here. I'm going to kind of quickly uh, go over the quadratic formula, and I'm going to give you a couple hints as we go through this. But I'm going to show you some errors, okay, that students make, and this is after me, uh, you know, over the decades of teaching math, uh, I probably have graded 100 million quizzes, uh, tests, homework. Well, maybe not that much, but you get the idea. A lot. Okay. So you see everything and you see common trends. So I'm going to highlight areas where students make mistakes. But before I uh, show you that, I want to see if you will make this mistake. So basically, here is the quadratic formula. When you have a quadratic equation in this form, okay, you can solve this quadratic equation x by following this quadratic formula. So I'm going to keep it kind of general because I'm not going to give you too many hints. And we use the quadratic formula, this down here, when we can't use other techniques like factoring. Uh, when uh, we have a quadratic equation equal to zero, we always want to try to factor or take the square root of both sides of the equation. If we can't do that, we will uh, default to the quadratic formula. So something you absolutely need to know uh, if you are uh, studying algebra. Okay, so let's get into uh, the formula. So if you want to write this down, I'll show this to you here. I'm going to give you a problem, and then I want to see how well you do. Okay, so here is, uh, again, the quadratic formula. We just kind of went over it. And here is the problem. Okay, so negative 2x is equal to 7x squared plus 1. Go ahead and use the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation. So a couple quick things here. This is a quadratic equation. It will have two solutions, and those solutions can be real and or imaginary numbers, complex numbers. If you haven't studied uh, imaginary numbers, I'll show you uh, or kind of highlight some of these um, uh, concepts as we get going. But if you're taking Algebra 1, probably are going to be uh, studying imaginary numbers. But uh, just in case, you might run into any of these in this particular problem. Okay, so if you want to pause the video, go ahead and uh, plug this into the formula and see what you come up with. All right, so if you're feeling pretty good about this problem, let's go ahead and get into it now. Okay, so first things first, here is um, the general form your quadratic equation must be written in in order to use a quadratic formula. Okay, so this is what we call standard form of an equation. It's highest to lowest power. So if you notice here, 
uh, negative 2x is equal to 7x squared. This is not written uh, in highest to lowest power, and it's also not equal to 0. So we want to move these two terms over to the other side, set this equal to 0, and when we do that, we get negative 7x squared minus 2x minus 1. This now, this quadratic uh, equation is in standard form, okay? And that's important because we need to pull these coefficients here from this equation, okay? So before you can know your A, B, and C values, you have to uh, first make sure your equation is in standard form. Okay, so here it is in standard form. And now here is the quadratic formula again. So, you know, I'm giving you multiple chances here just to take over this problem. And anytime you think you can do this, you're like, oh, I can do this because now I'm kind of showing you, okay, A, B, and C. Hopefully you kind of identify, oh, this might be A, this might be uh, B, and this might be C. It's just a matter of plugging in these values and simplifying, okay? So that's really what uh, we're going to be doing with the quadratic uh, formula. So take over the problem if you feel confident enough. This is what I want you to do. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see what happens when we plug in our values. So now that we have our quadratic equation written in quadratic form, we can see the coefficients. This uh, are what we call our leading coefficient. The one in front of the x squared term is a. Okay, so a is going to be negative 7. This middle term is going to be b. Okay, that's going to be negative 2. And then this constant number is going to be C uh, or negative 1. All right, so now what we have to do is wherever we see Bs, okay, we'll replace that with a negative 2. Wherever we see an A, we'll replace with negative 7. And then we have C right here, we'll replace that with negative 1. So I'm basically telling you what to do here, right? So just follow the formula and simplify, okay? And you'll be like, all right, I can do this, I can do this. Well, I'm going to show you places where students uh, really make a lot of errors. Okay, now at this point, okay, again, I'm kind of giving you opportunity to do this on your own. I'm going to go ahead and show you um, the setup here, okay? So anytime you're plugging in numeric values for uh, variables, okay, a number or a value assigned to a variable like this, in algebra, always use parentheses, okay? It will really, really um, help you not make an error. Okay, so here, let's start off with minus b. What is b? It's negative 2. All right, this is a common place where students will me uh, mess this up. They'll be like, oh, this already has a negative, this has a negative. I just, they don't put in um, these values with parentheses. You must put this value b with this whole negative 2. Okay, they'll, sometimes they'll just write negative 2. Now, I don't know why they do that because they'll probably say, well, there's already a negative sign there but it is a super, super common, common misunderstanding. Let's take a look at b squared. Okay, so b is negative 2. So again, notice I'm putting, um, substituting in or plugging in my values using parentheses. Okay, and I'm double-checking this very, very, you know, cautiously. Now I have a minus sign, so I write that minus sign. I have a 4. Now I have a. Okay, what's a? Negative 7. Again, I'm plugging it in with parentheses. Then I have c. That's going to be negative 1 in parentheses. Now, this is all going to be over 2 times a. Again, a is negative 7. So there is the setup. Now, what you want to do when you're working with the quadratic formula is before you go any further uh, uh, and start doing all this math here, stop and double, triple check. Hey, did I do that right? Did I do this right? Did I plug everything right? Take the time to triple check, kind of grade yourself because... Um, oftentimes you will um, make an error, okay? So it's very common that students will plug in something uh, incorrectly right here. A sign will be messed up, especially when there's a lot of negatives floating around there. So if you made that error, if you made, you know, if you're like, oh, I got that wrong, well, again, I'm saying that 99% of students will make some sort of error when they're doing a problem like this. All right, now, at this time, I'm going to uh, show you where a ton of students make uh, an error. Okay, so first of all, um, again, they don't plug things in correctly using parentheses, so that's error. That's a common um, errors, number one. And then this may be the most common place where students make errors, and it's right in this part of the quadratic formula called the discriminant. Okay, students get this confused for uh, whatever reason. So right here, this is this b squared minus 4ac part of the quadratic formula is something called the discriminant. So this is a uh, subtraction sign here for AC. You got to uh, remember, let me kind of write this back out. 
this uh, uh, sub subtraction sign here really is a negative sign in front of this negative four. So this is, you can think of this as plus negative four. But what you have to really uh, determine here is the sign of all of this when you um, do this product, when you do all this multiplication. So we have a negative times a negative, which is what? That's going to be positive times a negative, okay? So that's um, all going to be a negative sign. Or So in other words, you're going to have 4 times 7. Uh, that's going to be positive 28 times negative 1, negative 28. Okay, and I'm just telling you right now, students really, really make a lot of errors right in here because you just have, I'm going to kind of erase it. Uh, you have to be super diligent. Okay, now if you're going very quick, you will miss a little tiny detail, which will trip up your entire problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the results of doing this. All right, so here again, we plugged in all our values. So this is going to be a positive 28. Negative 2 squared is going to be positive 4. A negative of a negative 2 is positive 2. And then 2 times negative 7 down here in the denominator is negative 14. Okay, so we're kind of just cleaning this up. And again, easy, um, uh, a lot of places to make a, a lot of easy mistakes. So if you made an error this far into the problem, again, you're not alone. The only way you, you know, you're going to get better at doing this is doing a ton of practices, a ton of practice problems, and uh, really be on the lookout for these places where you know it's very common for students to make a mistake. That's why I'm making this video to kind of highlight these areas so when you practice, you're on like high alert. All right, so let's continue uh, forward here. So we have 2 plus or minus 4 minus 28 is negative 24. So, hmm, what's going on here? Uh, some of you might be like, hmm, I'm not quite sure. What do I need to do with that square root of negative 24? Well, this is uh, going to be what we call an imaginary number, okay? And I'm wondering how many of you can actually just simplify the radical, uh, the square root of 24. Can you simplify a square root? Assume that you can do, uh, you would um, be asked to do this problem without a calculator. Well, I'm going to show you the rest of this problem here. Again, uh, I told you that probably a lot of you um, may not know how to do a problem like this, but let's go ahead and deal with this part of the problem now. We have the square root of a negative 24. What is that equal to? Okay. Well, first of all, this uh, answer is not going to be in the real number system. Okay, so let's just kind of take a look at this number systems real quick. The real number system is what you're used to, right? The real number line here is zero. Here's all the positive numbers. Here's all the negative numbers. That's the real number system. That's over here. Well, the real number system happens to be part of, it's a subsystem of something larger called the complex number system. And it has our little imaginary numbers I. Okay, so if you're not familiar with that, you will learn this either in your Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, College Algebra, somewhere along the line, you will learn how to deal with uh, these um, problems. So what you just need to know is that when you're taking the square root of a negative number, it's going to you're going to have an imaginary number, which is part of the complex uh, number system. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue forward now and deal with this square root of negative 24. So you might be saying, well, there's a lot of moving parts to this problem. Yes, there is. All right, so here, the square root of negative 24, let's go to um, look at the factors of negative 24. So you can write negative 24 as the square root of 4 times 6 times negative 1. If I multiply all these together, I will have a negative 24. And now you can pull apart this one big square root into smaller square roots. This is a property of radicals. So the square root of 4... I'm just going to write these individually now, uh, times the square root of 6, times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 4 is positive negative 2, times the square root of 6. There's no perfect square in there. And then the square root of negative 1, by definition, is something called i. Okay, So the square root of negative 24 is this expression right here. It is an imaginary number. Okay, So some of you might be like, wow, this is getting involved. Well, yes, again, there is a lot to know in mathematics. But hopefully this video is helping me out. All right, so now let's go back to our problem. We had 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 24. We just figured out that this is plus or minus uh, 2 uh, square root of 6i. Okay, so we're going to have that right there. This plus or minus, this is um, uh, basically the same plus or minus that you're getting right here. Okay, so when you're taking the square root 
of a uh, positive real number, you're always going to have that plus and minus uh, root. So that's why you have that in right there. So just know that uh, this right here, this numerator is equivalent. In other words, 2 plus or minus square root of negative 24 is equal to 2 plus or minus uh, 2 square root of 6 uh, square root of 6 i over uh, negative 14. However, we are not done. We are close, but we are not done because we can simplify this. And if you can simplify it, go ahead and do so now. And let's go ahead and just uh, show you what we need to do. Well, there is a common factor of 2. In other words, we can factor out a 2 here because 2 times 1 gets me 2. 2 times this uh, square root of 6i okay, will get me 2 square root of 6i. And then negative 14, of course, is 2 times negative uh, 7. So I can cross cancel a 2 there, which leaves me with finally x is equal to 1 plus or minus square root of 6 i over negative 7. This is the final answer. Okay, so how did you do? Okay, if you got this right all on your, your, your own and you, you know, got this problem down to this point, well, then I must go ahead and give you the awesome 1982. I'm going to go ahead and give you a super duper Mohawk from 1982. It was a great year. Um, and that was like super impressive uh, haircut way back in the day, just like your ability to do this. And A plus, I'm going to give you a thousand percent uh, multiple stars. Matter of fact, if you were in my algebra course, I would be like, you know what, just take the rest of the year off. You're just like too good to be in this classroom. I'll send you your report card. I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you're watching that guy on YouTube, but that's excellent. Okay, that shows me that you understand um, imaginary numbers. You understand how to simplify uh, uh, radicals, square roots, you understand how to um, work with the quadratic formula, you know, and really be diligent as you're working through all these values and whatnot. It's easy to trip up and make a mistake. However, if you made a mistake or you didn't know what you were doing, you're not alone, okay? But I'm telling you right now, uh, it doesn't mean that you're always going to be making an error when it comes to the quadratic formula. Um, it just, you know, you have to ask yourself, are you going to want to improve, okay? If you make a mistake and you keep making a mistake, well, you have to stop and ask yourself, where, what am I doing here? What's, what's throwing me off every time I do a problem like this? And I try to um, basically in this video highlight some of the main places where students get tripped up using the quadratic formula. If you focus in on those, you kind of follow my guidance. I'm telling you right now, you're going to do much, much better when using the quadratic formula or any formula for that in mathematics. Okay, so a couple um, last little uh, thoughts. If you need additional help in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calc, this doesn't make a difference, check out all my math courses. Uh, it's super comprehensive. I get into many, many. I solve all sorts of, basically, all the different type of variety of problems you're going to be facing in your course. I solve in my math help program. Also, I have additional videos on this in my YouTube channel, and I do have math notes that you can check out. Um, uh, you can find the links to those in the description, description of this video. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.